Jeremy Ballard, head basketball coach here with FIU. I'm AJ Ricketts. Uh, our second hangout of the week, little Friday happy hour edition. Coach, good to see you, man. Uh, it, it's I, I told someone else this the other day. It feels like uh, it was yesterday when we were pulling out of the hotel and the conference tournament got canceled. It also feels like that was a million years ago, man. Uh, how's how you hanging in there through all this? How's everything? Going? Yeah, I mean, time is weird in that way. I mean, that seems like you know forever ago when uh, when we got that news. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it's, it's well here, you know, I, I've been fortunate, been, been lucky. Um, I definitely miss the players, you know, the, these guys are all home and safe, um, fortunately, but, you know, miss having them around, uh, you know, miss, miss being able to go over to the gym to see them, miss those guys coming by our office yeah. and, and, and seeing us. And, um, and, and obviously you know, we, we were incredibly disappointed with, you know, not, not being able to finish out our, our conference tournament, but. Uh, you know, more importantly, we're, we're all healthy and, and uh, very grateful for that. You feel like you got some cabin fever at this point? You, you've been able to, to stay busy or get, get out of the apartment a little bit? Or are you, you driving yourself crazy right now? What's going on there? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, you know, one of the greatest blessings of, of being here in Miami is the weather. And yeah. I mean, this last like seven weeks, uh, the weather has been phenomenal here. So I, I go out and walk just about every day. Um, you know, social distance walk, but, but I go out and enjoy it every day. So. I'm probably about the most tan as I, as I've ever been, and, and um, yeah. it, it's been great. So so I, I do my best not to just be, um, you know, cr- cramped up in, in my place, and and definitely have have enjoyed the and weather. I tell you what, during during the first month of this, when like not going anywhere, it was the best weather, the yep. best stretch of weather. It was it was it was teasing us, man. I I, I wanted it to thunderstorm a little bit and just be terrible yeah. outside. So I feel a little lefty about being in the, the house all day. Right. Man, yeah, you're right. It was it was it was glorious weather for a long Incredible. time. This is uh this is this is weird, right? This is this is obviously unprecedented, um, and how a season ends. Um, usually, if your last game's a win, you've won a tournament. Uh, so the first facet of all this I'll talk about is how how things have been since in, in the recruiting game uh we'll, we'll talk about the guys we've signed certainly but just in, in terms of going about your business in the recruiting scene uh, one thing we talked about with with coach melendez of baseball it's different to see guys on tape in person you have that aspect but but how how have you had to transition in, in that aspect of things and, and the challenges so that- uh t- to be honest i honestly think it's tougher on these student athletes because you know you, you have these young men that are making decisions to to go to schools and, and they've never set foot on their campus in, in a lot of scenarios so you know uh, the, the first the time that a lot of these guys will step foot on FIU's campus will you know fully enroll in their classes so you know th- th- that's tough uh, but uh, you know in this day and age with technology we've got a lot of zoom um, recruiting calls and presentations with with recruits um obviously staying connected over the phone and things like that so um and and we've always prided ourselves on doing a lot of recruiting and evaluating through film and and, and coach melendez is certainly correct you know there's there's a different feeling when you can actually be there and see it in person and and get that feel but um you know we've done a lot of recruiting through the years uh through film and 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 so we're, we're kind of accustomed to that and and we've been able to sign a class that we're very excited about, um, you know, throughout let's, this let's pandemic. Let's talk about that class a little bit. We, we've seen the announcements on, on social media, and, and that's nice to bring some buzz. Uh, and uh, we're obviously devoid of uh, a lot of sports news. So we, we've had a couple of sightings. So I uh, figure might as well talk about a couple of these guys and, and how we're excited to bring them in. Um, I guess the first guy. We, we can spotlight. Uh, let's talk a little bit about DJ Mitchell. Uh, he's coming into the program from uh, Hutchinson Community College, which typically always sends guys to, uh, to D1 level. He's originally out of D.C. Um, what do you feel he, he's going to bring to the program? What impressed you about his game? As he, he just signed with us recently. Yeah, he, he's from two basketball hotbeds. You know, H- Hutch is a um, Juco powerhouse. Yeah. Um, so, so coming from there and, and coming from DMV, um, you know, he's certainly been around big time. On basketball for, for his entire life. Um, he, he's he's the, definitely the kind of perimeter player we want to bring in. He, he's a guy that's, um, you know, really good with the ball in his hands. You know, he, he can dribble a pass and shoot. Um, he can make plays off of ball screens. He can make plays off the dribble. Um, he, he's versatile. Um, he, he can knock down shots. So, you know, he, he's the kind of guy that we bring into our system and really helps with our 
positionless style of basketball. Yeah. Uh, another JUCO guy that's coming in originally out of Maryland um, by way of Butler uh, Community College. Great score, Javante Hawk, bring a, a nice scoring touch to the program. Yeah, Javante is another guy that comes from a great junior college program. Um, you know, he currently resides in the Kansas City area. And, and the thing that I, that I love about him probably more than anything is, man, he's got a real fire in his belly um, that, that the fans are going to love. He's tough. He wants to win. He's very competitive, uh, but he's also highly skilled. He's got deep, deep range. Uh, another guy that can really play in, uh, in ball screens, um, you can, can dribble, pass, and shoot um, at multiple levels. So we're, we're really excited about him, and, and he'll really fit in seamlessly as well. Uh- a grad transfer we've got coming into the program. He's from the Bahamas, uh, spent some time at UT Arlington, but he's uh, our most recent signee, Rashad Davis. Uh, brings a little, little bit of collegiate experience with him uh, at the D1 level, which, which is always nice to bring. In. So Rashad Davis coming into the program. Yeah, Rashad brings a lot of experience. Um, um, what, what we're really excited about him. I mean, he's he, he's got the ad, huge added benefit that, He's competed and he's produced at, at the Division One level. You know, being in the Sun Belt last year, he averaged ten points and seven rebounds a game. Rebounds a game at any level yeah. is impressive, and, and it's certainly an area where where we need help. You know, is on the glass. And, but but he does other things than just rebound. Um, he was this team's best defender, led them in steals, uh, was about a two to one assist to turnover ratio. So we really feel that in our system, with our spacing and, and the pace which we play at and what we do on the defensive end, that he can come in and have an immediate impact. And then our, our, our fourth signee, um, local guy. Well, uh, eventually a local guy. Didn't start off at, right. as a local guy. Grew up in, in Montenegro. Um, spent some time at Miami Prep School. So you, you, you get a guy out of the 305. And, um, you know, I haven't heard – his name announced. So I'm going to, I'm going to try it the first. You probably know better than, than I do the pronunciation. Petar Krivokopic. Yeah. Yeah. Am I, I, close? I think you do. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Uh, Pet, Petar is, is a guy we're very, very excited about. We identify Petar earlier in the year. Um, he, he plays for a storied program for a storied coach and, and coach Pauline Alvarez who did, did a great job of, of highlighting him and putting him in a system um, that, that really fits his game. And, and he comes basketball hot bread too in yeah. Montenegro. And you could tell in his game that, you know, he's growing up playing high level basketball his entire life. Um, he is a sniper. That's the thing that obviously as a shooter that, you know, it's the thing that jumps out to people, but he can really make plays off the dribble. Um, he can play in ball screens and, and he's a tough kid that plays with the chip on his shoulder as well. So we're, we're very excited. Uh, obviously we're, we're excited anytime we can recruit someone that's, that's played locally here and and um, and also like bringing some international flavor to our yeah, roster. Absolutely as well. excited to to see these guys coming to the program. Uh, they'll help fill the void left by our senior class. One of those seniors. Uh, just want to shout them out here. Happy birthday to uh, this guy, Trey, Trey John Jacob, birthday kid today. A shout a shout out to him, and, and that'll lead us uh, into another question. We'll start with our Twitter questions here, Coach. Um, first one coming from. From Eddie Hondal, and he's referencing uh, with seniors. He says, "Coach, great job for a long time FIU hoops fan. Actually, uh, since our first coach, uh, Coach Walker, you're doing great things at FIU. So, a big pause. My question: Chances for our Big O to get drafted uh, the NBA draft? So, uh, I guess to discuss, you know, his prospects or, or what we may see from from Trey and Da. Also, trying to get their shot wherever that may be. Um, but what do you see for for our sport in terms of?" continuing to play this well first one uh, i just piggyback off what you said and, and wish trey john a happy birthday he has been a loyal fantastic panther um you know like all our young men somebody who i love you i'm um, very proud of him um, i'm sad to see him go yeah. but but happy for his future um eddie we, i really appreciate your question um you know we're, we're excited about o's prime you know he just signed with one of the best Basketball agencies um, in the world, BDA, uh, Bill Duffy Associates. It's also, you know, Steve Nash was with. So it's a, it's a, it's a big time agency, um, and, and and they signed them for good reason. Uh, you know, I, I know he's had some calls and some interest from uh, both the Phoenix Suns and Chicago Bulls, I believe. And and you know, he he's coming off two years to directly translates to what he's asked to do at the next level. Um, you know, we, we play at an NBA pace. We play with NBA spacing. Um, we, we play NBA actions. 
Um, so uh, defensively, uh, we have a lot in the half court. We have a lot of NBA um, concepts. So, you know, I think scouts are, are now seeing, wow, you know, the, he, a lot of the things that he does translates and he's been in late. So, um, you know, I, I'm not sure. We'll see. I don't even know when the draft yeah. is going to be. Um, and whether O gets drafted or not is not as important as him finding um, the, a place where an organization where he can grow and develop and where he's got a good chance to, to be a part of their yeah, roster no, in the was, future. As, as fun a season it was to, to watch him lead the country in blocks, uh, a, spe- a special season as, we, as we've seen a big have, have at FIU. Um, we see Pineda on Twitter asking, uh, hey, Coach, many great games during the season. Which one was your favorite? A lot, a lot to choose from. Yeah. Uh, anything stand out when you, when you look at this campaign? That, that's a great, great question. I, I would say two probably have to stand out. Um, the, the UTSA game, um, you know, U, UTSA is a team that really put a, a whooping on us last year at their place. Um, they're very tough coached. Um, and, and they came in here, and, and we were really uh, – I, I mean, it wasn't looking great for us. You know, <laughs> we're the end of regulation – um, I, I believe it's one point six yeah, seconds. Like that. One six yeah, one eight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and and they're taking the ball out, and Eric Lovett, you know, checks into the game. Trey John Jacob does an unbelievable job, all being all over the ball, being the madman. Uh, the rest of our guys do a great job denying it, the, the ball in bounds, and you know, Eric Lovett get, gets a deflection, um, you know, possesses it and, and shoots it at the buzzer to force overtime. It was it was one of the more phenomenal uh, buzzer. Be- beating plays and, and then we were able to go on and win in overtime so that was an awesome win that certainly stands out um i, I would also say uh at yeah. odu um you know it was it was a nationally televised game um edu um fiu had never beaten odu in its history you know uh, odu has been the class of the league and, and and still is the class of the league um they have a hall of fame coach so you know for us to go in there and and and, you know, play as well as we did and, and uh, persevere through, through the ups and downs of that game, you know, I, I, was, incredibly, I was incredibly proud of that. I know the, the, scene, the scene in the locker room was phenomenal yeah. after the ODU game. There's some sort, uh, some semblance of dancing going on. What, what was the route of your locker you win on the road or after UTSA, or, or am I missing something? What was the, the best locker room scene? Well, <laughs> I, I would say it's probably in the top three. I, I, I yeah. would put at West, I would put, uh, the game Kentucky last okay. year um, a, a, as a rowdy uh, locker room yeah. scene too, but um, yeah, we, we we were happy, and as they say, we we were both of those games. Um, you know, there, there there were some water being tossed around and and, and lockers yeah. being banged. So you know, we, we had a good time, and our guys work extremely hard. They put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into this, and. And, you know, th- throughout that hard work, we, we like to have a lot of fun as well. And, and um, you know, that was a great, great team win. Um, the, the, the other win that, that, that was massive for us and a great win and, and also on the road was at yeah. FAU. And, um, you know, we, we you know, we, we've the last two years, the, the unique situation of playing them twice within the same week. And, um, you know, we played well at home. It was a hard-fought game, and, 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 man, they came back and, and they were really ready to play and made some great adjustments. And we got down. Um, Antonio Day Jr. got three fouls in the first half and, and uh, you know, it came back in the second half, really responded, helped lead the way, and, and uh, we had a comeback and a great team win. Um, so it's awesome to win at home in front of your – home crowd but you know anytime you can get those those road wins man those, those things are more precious than, yeah than it's, it, it feels like here in the two years that the team's been able to really build some you know iconic brand moments in terms of looking back on what's been accomplished like the comeback yeah at FAU sparked by Antonio Day uh the dunk by DA at Old Dominion to cement the first win you know against them in, in the history of the program um you know the win in the conference tournament uh, a quarterfinals you know winning at the conference tournament has not come easy in in program history uh, you happy with with the, the progress and the moments that have been made here in, in, in years one and two you feel on schedule and that you've been able to kind of incorporate what your vision was when when you got started yeah, I mean we've set a lot of records uh, I think we, we've had the most wins in in a two-year span ever at, at FIU so proud of that really proud of the young men that have trust us and trusted in our vision 
and, and first two years. Um, obviously, this year was cut short. You, yeah. We really felt that we had a run in us in the in the conference tournament. Um, yeah, well, you know, hopefully this is just the beginning. Um, you know, I, I'll tell our team this all the time come this far just to get this far so you know we, we want to keep progressing and, and keep moving forward and keep trying to move this program forward and we're really excited about the future all right i want to ask you uh i'm sh- i'm sure you have you've been, you've been locked into to uh this jordan documentary every sunday night you locked into that too absolutely that's must see tv yeah um fascinating television and it the thing the thing that stood out really in the, in the last week is just how hard Jordan pushed everybody else. I'm trying to think uh, the guy, what's his name? He, he went to UConn. Scott uh, Burrell. The guy that, Scott Burrell, yeah. And, and how much Jordan was getting on to him. Uh, when you when you coach, when, in your time coaching people, I mean, do you see guys try to have that mindset that MJ didn't? And are they, it, you have to be that that good, like, to, to really, like, how often do you see guys have that, that alpha mindset on collegiate team and, how, how much do they actually get out of guys on the team if they do? Or is, is that just not common? You don't see people pushing other teammates to that extent, um, even if they are the leading scorer or, or the leader of that team. Well, number one, I mean, no, it's not common at all. So yeah. obviously, you know, you take – you look at Michael Jordan, you take one of the most gifted, talented players of all time. So that's already, you know, he's 1% there. Th- then you take maybe the most competitive, driven athlete of all time. That's another – other thing he's a one percenter on um and then just that alpha drive to always get the best out of everyone so you know you you put all those things together i mean that's just something that, that's completely unprecedented um so yeah we for sure been a part of uh, some teams with great leaders um some, some guys that, that that really drive their team and push their team but to see that combination of all of those things come yeah. together like it did for Michael Jordan, they hey hey, there's a reason there's a a ten a ten part um, docu series on him, you know, twenty years yeah. after after that season. So uh, it's it's incredibly Who, who's special. The be- who's the biggest grinder? Who's the big grinder you've ever coached? Scott Jim Rat grinder is always pushing another teammate. Can't get him out of the gym. Uh, anybody stand out to you wherever you've been? Yeah, I, I mean, uh, now I've been fortunate. I've coached at a lot of different. You know, I, I think at, at each place, you know, the same players that have um gone above and beyond and have um really uh completely maximized their potential um i, I could think of a guy by the name of john simon who i coached yeah. um um cam johnson when i was at Pitt. um you know vcu we had a no- number of guys um troy dance yeah, uh travion graham um and, and then we've had a number of guys here at fiu that that, that have have really worked at it and, and, you know, like look, look no further than Asasu. I mean, he was a, a walk on two years ago and, you know, average, I think two points, two rebounds a game. And, you know, w- w- within the next two years, he's fourth in the nation in blocks. He's first in the nation in blocks. He's one of the nation's leader in, in field goal percentage. Uh, but we, we have a lot of guys that really grind on their game. You know, Antonio J is, is, is a grinder and someone that's all, always in them and, um, you know, I, I, I think the culture has really changed at FIU and that you get in the gym and you really work. And that's due to these guys um, that are always in the gym. Um, he, he's always in the gym. Trajan Jacobs is always in the gym. Um, Eric Lovett's always in the gym. Um, o was in the gym. Uh, Isaiah Banks. I, I mean, the, the list goes on and on. And they want to be there. They want to work on their game. They, they want to become great players. And, and um, and I'm really proud of that as well. Yeah, coach. no doubt. Every, every, every time I'm walking past the court, I usually see a couple of those guys. That's, that's definitely the culture that's been instilled. Uh, as you start wrapping up here, Jeremy, um, I, I, I've, I've got awesome answers when, when I've asked uh, different – I like to, to wrap up with this right now because we're all locked in the house, and so obviously binging television has become a, a daily part of our lives. Uh, when I asked Butch what, what he's been streaming, uh, Ozark and, and some football movies came to mind. Uh, Coach Merv referenced that he had been roped into watching 90 Day Fiance and the new edition of The Bachelor, uh, Listen to Your Heart, which um, I assured him are actually two terrific television programs that are well-produced and a lot, <laughs> a lot of fun. Right. There's no shame in that. Jeremy, what, do you, what have you been streaming uh, dur- during all this? What's the, what's the, the binge 
binge worthy shows. Yeah. So you mentioned it, obviously the last dance. I mean, I, I went from being mad, you know, on the first night that they didn't show all 10 parts and watched all 10 parts yeah. to now I'm upset that it's about to be over. Uh, but, but the, uh, you know, the last dance, um, Ozark, uh, season what was it season three that yeah, just came out. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah I, I binged that in a couple of days. Um, money heist, um, we, we, on, on Netflix, it's, it's a uh, Spanish miniseries. I uh, love yeah. that. I think that was four seasons um, that, that binged in about uh, two weeks. <laughs> um, so there, there's a lot of that going on. Uh, you know, since, since you know, I, I give Coach Merv uh, credit, you know, he's being honest and some guilty pleasures. So, so my reality guilty pleasure is the challenge okay. on MTV. Um, I, I, I've been a fan since I was in college, high school. So, I, I still watch that every Wednesday night. Um, so that's, I hadn't, that's, I hadn't seen that one deal. yet. Yeah. I'll have to, I'll have to check it out. But I, I, I know apparently anyone that watches 90 day, that's you're not as unique as you think. That's the great show. <laughs> Everyone's watching it. It's fantastic. Uh, am I, am I right? I, I know. I think Goodman or Rothstein, I forget. They did art. Some article pulled all the coaches on their favorite show. Are you, you're a fan of the wire. Is that right? Are you, Absolutely. that's one of your favorite ones. Just Absolutely. started that one. Already a big yeah. fan of it. That's a good classic. One. That's, yeah. Probably the greatest show of all time. <laughs> no, yeah, I onto that one. The Wire and Billions. That's my 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 focus. Like I, you can't be on your phone when you're when you're watching that. You gotta be. No, you, you gotta, gotta be dialed in. <laughs> you gotta be dialed in. You can't you like? And especially the Wire. Like there'll be some random subtle thing you yeah. see in season one that'll come up in season three, and you're like, oh wow, oh, yeah. like exactly. They, they met together, and uh, and I'm a fan of Billions too. So you know, those, those are two great shows. You locked in on those. And the bas- yes. Bachelor, you can be on the phone a little bit and, and have it in the background. No you're, you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna miss everything on the wire, no doubt. Uh, or, or or what uh, what else? All right, uh, Jeremy, appreciate the time, man. Uh, thanks to everyone who's watched this, whether live or, or once we post on social media. Um, but uh, I'm sure we'll do this again soon. What's what's coming up? Uh, you, you you staying active? You staying healthy? You, you finding ways to get out of the house? Would you, any, anything coming up for you the next week or two? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, shoot, the, the last last two episodes of the last day, yeah. that's the biggest thing happening uh, this yeah. weekend. But but no, certainly as the weather permits, I I get out there and and you know walk, jog, um, you know, try and do a little exercise and. And other than that, I'm I'm in my I'm in my home uh, doing a lot of work, a lot of film, doing a lot of Zoom calls. Yeah. So uh, definitely staying busy, but but also staying productive and 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 most importantly, been able to 100%, stay healthy. Hundred percent, man. Well, hopefully, fingers crossed. The, these reopenings keep uh, keep keep being safe and, and we can start to get back to a, a little bit more sense of normalcy. But in the meantime, be well. Uh, thanks to everyone for for watching here, and uh, of course, Tyson, Chris, and uh, Tyler Brain for helping produce this. All right, Jeremy. Well, Thank you. Thanks so much, man. Yes, sir. All right, everybody, pause up. We'll see you next time, Bush. <laughs>